Good Monday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations ID News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, it's a brand new day, it's a brand new week, which means it's a brand new opportunity for you to do something amazing, and it all begins today. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Monday. We have the truth of the Davis Murray Ellen Tiganovich in today's entertainment spotlight, being part of my conversation with dietitian nutritionist Mia Sin, sharing some great ways for you guys to eat healthy as we're going throughout this year. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with their Monday headlines. In international news, no city anymore. Mariupol survivors take train to safety. The heat on the train was as thick as the anxiety. Ukrainian survivors of one of the most brutal sieges in modern history were in the final minutes of their ride to relative safety. Some carried only what they had at hand when they seized the chance to escape the port of Mariupol amid relentless Russian embarment. Some fled so quickly that relatives who were still in the starving, freezing Ukrainian city on the sea aren't even aware they were gone. The relief of being free from weeks of threats and deprivation of seeing bodies in the streets and drinking melted snow because there was no water was crushed by sadness as some thought of their family members left behind. Maripol authorities say nearly 10% of the city's population of 430,000 have fled over the past week, risking their lives and convoys out. The Maripol City Council has asserted that several thousand residents were taken into Russia against their will over the past week. On Sunday, the Russia-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine said 2,973 people have been evacuated from Maripol since March the 5th, including 541 over the last 24 hours. The train of survivors on Sunday afternoon approached the central station of Lviv, the city near Poland, that had absorbed an estimated 200,000 people fleeing other areas of Ukraine. In a related story, Zelensky evokes Holocaust as he appeals to Israel for aid. Ukraine's president on Sunday called on Israel to take a stronger stand against Russia, delivering an emotional appeal that compared Russia's invasion of his country to the actions of Nazi Germany. In a speech to Israeli lawmakers over Zoom, President Zelensky said it was time for Israel, which has emerged as a key mediator between Ukraine and Russia, to finally take sides. He said Israel should follow its Western allies by imposing sanctions and providing arms to Ukraine. One can ask for a long time why we can't accept weapons from you or why Israel didn't impose sanctions against Russia. Why you are not putting pressure on Russian business, he said. It is your choice, dear brothers and sisters. Zelensky, who had carefully catered a series of similar speeches to his audiences, made frequent references to the Holocaust as he tried to rally support. The comparisons drew an angry condemnation from Israel's National Holocaust Memorial, which says Zelensky was trivializing the Holocaust. Zelensky accused the Russian president of trying to carry out final solution against Ukraine, using the Nazi term for its planned genocide of 6 million Jews during World War II. In national news, history-making Jackson set for a Senate hearing for high court. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman nominated to the Supreme Court, is going before the Senate Judiciary Committee with the path to her historic confirmation seemingly clear. Committee hearings begin today for the 51-year-old Jackson, a federal judge for the past nine years. Her testimony will give most Americans, as well as the Senate, their most extensive look yet as a Harvard-trained lawyer with a resume that includes two years as a federal public defender. That makes her the first nominee with significant criminal defense experience since Thurgood Marshall, the first black American to serve on the nation's highest court. The American Bar Association, which evaluates judicial nominees on Friday, gave Jackson its highest rating, unanimously well qualified. It's not yet clear how aggressively Republicans would go after Jackson, given that her confirmation would not alter the court's 6-3 conservative majority. In business news, stocks rose for a fourth day in a row on Friday, closing out their biggest weekly gain since November 2020. Investors have welcomed the long expected pivot from the Federal Reserve from stimulating the economy to fighting inflation, which began last week with its first interest rate hike since 2018. The price of oil remains above $100 a barrel as investors monitor the ongoing Russia invasion of Ukraine. The yield on the 10-year Treasury note fell to 2.15%. On Friday, the S&P 500 rose 51 points, or 1.2%, to 4,463. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 274 points, or 0.8%, to 34,755. 
And finally, in entertainment news, the Batman still number one crosses $300 million. The Batman is still going strong three weeks into its theatrical run with a tight grip on the top spot at the box office. Robert Pattinson's debut as The Dark Knight earned an additional $37 million over the weekend, according to studio estimates on Sunday. It also slid past the $300 million mark ahead of projections. That made the top five movies over the weekend. Number one, The Batman with $37 million. Number two, Jujitsu Kaisen O with $18 million. Number three, Uncharted with $8 million. Number four, X with $4 million. And number five, Dog with $4 million. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Tegenvis. Mary Ellen, it's all yours. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Respond, never react. Maintaining control over your emotions is one of the greatest keys to creating a peaceful, loving, and successful life. This allows the people you encounter to experience the person you truly are, as opposed to being judged by the erroneous reactions you may have done in the past. Overblown or highly expressive reactions send a negative message. By choosing to respond, Instead of allowing your emotions to get the best of you, it demonstrates to others you have a sense of confidence and an inner strength. This mastery of your feelings inspires others to feel at ease around you because they can sense your confidence. Today, be actively responsive rather than emotionally reactive. And as always, enjoy your day. We are part of my conversation coming up with dietitian nutritionist Mia Sin in today's entertainment spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Severus Webb with the entertainment spotlight. Dietitian and nutritionist Mia Sin rejoin me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to share with you guys how you can be able to eat a little bit healthier as we're going throughout this year. Here's a bit of our conversation. We know that when it comes to nutrition and wellness, Mia, it can be an individual thing. So where can we start when it comes to kind of thinking about our own needs when it comes to nutrition? You're right. Food is confusing. You know, everyone has an opinion, and you can really eliminate confusion with a personalized nutrition program like Zoe's, which helps you understand exactly how to eat for your body and gut bacteria so that you can feel healthier, lose weight, and have more energy without dieting. So it starts with an at-home test. It was created by top scientists as part of the largest nutrition study in the world. And your results power your Zoe app and show you which foods are best for you and how to combine foods to reach your goals. So Zoe members learn to stop restricting food, eat abundantly. Uh, One of our members, Nancy, she struggled with her weight her whole life. And then with Zoe, she realized it wasn't her fault or willpower. It was that she needed to learn to eat for her body. And on Zoe, she learned just that. She learned she could make real full-fat ice cream work for her if she added nuts and fruit to her diet and still lose weight. Uh, How can we be able to snack though, Mia, without feeling guilty about it? Yes, we are a nation that loves snacking. I love snacking. You can absolutely do it in a nutritious way. So one snack I really like right now are the organic rice cake minis by Lundborg Family Farms. They're the ideal bite-sized snack. They're perfectly thin with subtle crunch made with organic whole grain brown rice. And they come in five flavors. We have the ginger seaweed, white cheddar, sea salt, apple pie, and buffalo ranch. Plus they're USDA organic, non-GMO certified, 100% whole grain and certified gluten-free, and you can enjoy them on their own, top with a slice of cheese, or dunk into your favorite dip. So tasty. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We're about to get on tomorrow's more news. Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Teganovich, and of course, the entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make today amazing. Take care.